friends, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another five nights of dinners. I have a feeling that this is your guys' favorite video that I put out and I absolutely love this video too. It just takes a little bit of time to compile enough dinners to make five nights of dinner. But I am so excited about the five recipes that I'm gonna be showing you in this video. They were all so good. There's a crock pot recipe, some comfort food, some family friendly and just all around delicious recipes. So if you wanna see the five dinners that I prepared that are WW friendly, just keep watching. For dinner tonight, I'm going to be making jalapeno popper chicken biscuit casserole. This recipe comes from WW Pound Dropper, one of my favorite blogs on Instagram for Weight Watcher recipes. So let me show you what is in tonight's dinner. You're going to need some skim milk or milk alternative. Two cups of shredded chicken. I went ahead and cooked this in my meal prep. Self-rising flour, non-fat Greek yogurt. We are going to be making two ingredient dough. Water, an egg. I'm going to be using green chilies instead of jalapenos only because my husband is not a spicy food fan. So I thought that this would give the same essence but be a lot less spicy. Healthy request, cream of chicken soup one third less fat cream cheese, and a light shredded mozzarella. So let's get started. The first thing I did is went ahead and crumbled up my bacon once it came out of the oven and cooled. And I did chop up my onion. So we're gonna go ahead and add that in here with the bacon. And then we'll go ahead and get our eggs whisked together and start adding the rest of our ingredients. Go ahead and crack six eggs into a bowl, and then to that bowl, you're gonna add whatever spices you choose. So I'm going to use some garlic, herb, and butter seasoning. I really like this in eggs. It is not salty, but it just adds that little bit of flavor. And then I'm also going to use some ground black pepper. And then I'm just gonna add my very favorite thing in eggs, which is the Trader Joe's onion salt. So I'm gonna add that in, and then we're just going to give this a quick whisk you just want to make sure that everything gets nice and combined and then we will add it to our bacon and onion mixture what i like about this casserole is it gives you your protein and your starch all in one and your eggs so it's really nice it's just super easy to take with you so we'll go ahead and get those eggs mixed in and then we're going to go ahead and add that to our onions and bacon and literally everything is going to go in this bowl, so it makes it incredibly easy. From there, I have measured out eight ounces of the Trader Joe's light mozzarella, so that is going to go into the bowl. Also, I'm gonna go ahead and put my entire bag of fat-free shredded cheese because it is one and three quarters cups, and the recipe actually calls for two cups. So I'm gonna go ahead and add the whole thing to it. And then that way, I don't have to worry about measuring it out. We're actually short a quarter of a cup, which is no big deal. And then next, I'm going to be adding in my four cups of shredded hash browns. I just measured that out on my food scale to make sure that I had the right amount of grams. And I did the same thing with my low-fat cottage cheese, which is the last thing that we're going to add to our mix. And then we're going to get this all stirred up and ready to go. Once you've mixed all of your casserole ingredients together, look at you guys. This looks so delicious. We are going to go ahead and add it to a greased 9 by 13 pan. So you just want to spread it out as even as possible into your 9 by 13 pan. And then we are going to put this in the oven at 350 for 45 to 50 minutes until cooked through. And we do wanna go ahead and cover it with foil for the majority of the cooking time. And the reasoning for that is when you cover a casserole with foil, it retains the moisture. So your casserole doesn't become as dry. So that's something I just recently learned and it is a lifesaver trick so that you don't end up with those icky dry casseroles from being open in your oven. So. Get that spread out nice and even in your casserole dish, and we're gonna get this in the oven, and I will be back to show you the finished product as soon as it comes out of the oven. So the first thing we need to do is make the sauce for our casserole. So in my pan here, I have four ounces of the one-third less fat cream cheese, 
to that, we are going to be adding in our Healthy Request Cream of Chicken Soup. We're also going to add in green chilies. What I did is I reserved one tablespoon of the green chilies to add to the top of the casserole. We are going to melt that down and then we will add in our milk and our cheese and that is what is going to create the sauce for our casserole. Sounds delicious. So we're going to go ahead and let this melt down and create the sauce but it smells really good and I'm glad that I used the chilies to cut down on the spice. Now if you wanted your dish to have a little bit more of a kick you would have just used some diced jalapenos. Once your soup, cream cheese, and chili or jalapeno mixture is cooked down, we are going to add in one ounce of our light shredded cheese, and we're going to stir that until that is also melted down and combined with the rest of our sauce before we add in our shredded chicken. Once your cheese has melted, we are going to add in one half of a cup of skim milk. Give that a good stir, and then we're going to add in our shredded chicken. You can also use diced chicken or whatever kind of chicken canned even if you wanted, but I usually just meal prep my chicken on meal prep day and then it's ready for whatever recipes I may need it for during the week. So we're going to go ahead and add in our two cups of cooked shredded chicken. Give that a nice good stir. Once this is fully combined, we are going to remove it from the heat and set it aside and make our dough for the bubble up portion of our casserole. I did decide just to add a little bit of salt and pepper. I'm going to stir this up, set this aside, and we are on to making our dough. Once you have your dough rolled into your little balls, you're going to grab your mixture. So the recipe wants you to actually mix your doughs, dough balls in with your mixture. I don't like to do that because I feel that it just demolishes your little balls of dough. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to layer half of my mixture into my 9 by 13 greased baking dish. Make sure that you guys grease your dish really well. So I'm just going to put a really thin layer into the bottom of my dish only because I can add the balls of dough to that and then top it with some additional mixture and that way my balls of dough don't get demolished when I'm mixing them in. I've made these types of recipes before and I just don't like the way that it comes out. So I put a little bit of mixture. Now I'm just going to drop these just kind of randomly into my casserole mix. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited about this. Looks so good. So we're just going to get these kind of just make sure that you have little balls of dough in all of the areas because you're going to cut this into six servings. So you just want to make sure that all of your servings end up with a little bit of the biscuit mix. And then to that, we are going to go ahead and top it with the rest of our mixture. So we basically did the same thing. We just kind of did it backwards. And this way our balls should stay a little bit more in the right shape. So just pro tip, you can follow the directions if you want to, but I do find when I'm making this type of recipe where there is the two ingredient dough that it's just a little bit easier if you kind of layer it versus mixing in your balls of dough. So you just want to spread that mixture nice and evenly throughout your entire casserole. This is going to go into the oven at 350 degrees for 30 to 35 minutes or until the balls of dough are completely cooked. So doesn't that look absolutely divine? Before I pop the casserole into the oven, I did decide to sprinkle on the top just a little bit of the everything but the bagel seasoning, about a teaspoon worth, just to give it a little bit of color on top and add that little bit of salty oniony flavor. So that is an addition that I made to the original recipe. So now I'm putting this casserole into the oven. I just pulled our casserole out of the oven. This looks so good. My house smells amazing. Look at this, you guys. Those biscuits just bubbled up. They browned. It's cheesy. It's creamy. So this is where we will go ahead and add 
that one tablespoon of jalapenos or chilies that you reserved out. And then also we are going to add a little bit of these real bacon pieces just for fun to the top. But I'm going to actually add those to my serving, not to the entire casserole because I'm afraid that the bacon will get mushy sitting in the fridge. So I'm going to let this rest for just a few minutes and then I'm going to plate up one sixth or one cup of this casserole and I will show you my completed dinner. And here is my plated up dinner. You guys, this looks amazing. This entire plate of food, this is a full size dinner plate. So that is a lot of food is only six smart points. I did not add enough bacon to equivalent to a smart point. So this entire meal is six smart points. Look at how creamy this looks. I am so excited for this dinner. I hope that you enjoyed tonight's dinner. For tonight's dinner, we are going to be making beef stew in our slow cooker. So it is currently 6 a.m. and I'm going to get all of my beef stew mixture into my slow cooker. And then when we get home, we have just one small thing to do before we're ready to serve it. So let's get everything put into the slow cooker. So the first thing that you're going to do is go ahead and add in your cut up pieces of stew meat. I went ahead and prepped these in meal prep so they were ready to go. Makes it a lot easier. You don't have to cut meat and vegetables in the morning. And then you're going to go ahead and add in some ground pepper and some salt over your meat pieces. Pepper and salt. And then we'll add in our potatoes, carrots, and some of our veggies. Once you've seasoned your meat, you're going to go ahead and you're going to add in all your vegetables. So this is potatoes, carrots, celery, and some fresh parsley. So we're going to go ahead and add that to our meat mixture. This is going to make our crock pot really full. So you're going to want to be careful when you're stirring it around and adding the last few of your ingredients. Once you've added in your vegetables and you've given that a good stir, the next thing we're gonna be adding in is some beef broth. You want about three cups of beef broth into your stew mixture. Remember, stew is a thicker soup, so we don't wanna overdo the beef broth that we're adding. You can also use stick chicken if you would rather than beef broth, but make sure that you get that nice and kind of drizzled over all of the meat and veggies in your crock pot and then to that we are going to be adding in one quarter of a cup of tomato paste so I'm just going to kind of drizzle that over the top and then I'll give my mix another good stir here so one quarter of a cup of tomato paste then we're going to add in one tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce and as you know I never measure these types of things I just kind of eyeball it so Worcestershire sauce and then we're also going to be adding in some reduced salt or light soy sauce as well and that is a tablespoon. Give that a good mix. Now the recipe does call for you to use regular onion that you would just dice yourself. I decided not to do that just because I prefer the onion pieces a little bit smaller. So I'm going to actually just go ahead and add some minced onion that is equivalent to about chopping up an onion. And then lastly, we are going to be adding some spices. So it calls for rosemary and thyme. I'm going to go ahead and use Italian seasoning because both of those spices are in there and I do not have any rosemary. Apparently didn't plan that well for this. I thought that I did. And then lastly, you're just going to add another dose of pepper and another dose of salt and get that all nice and stirred up and then we're ready to get it cooking. And our stew is ready to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this on to low and I'm going to allow it to cook the entire day that I'm at work. When I get home, we're gonna to mix together a little bit of cornstarch to thicken up our stew and we will be good to go. So I will see you after work. So I just walked in the door from work. Look at my stew, it is looking 
amazing. I did have my husband stir it a couple of times today. So there are just a couple of steps left to complete our stew. So the next thing that we're going to do is what I have here mixed is one and a half tablespoons of cornstarch with one and a half tablespoons of water. And that is just going to help thicken up the base of our stew. And then we're also going to add in one and a half cups or one entire small bag of frozen peas. And we're gonna let this cook for just a couple more minutes, just until the peas have cooked through and the broth is thickened up a little bit. So I'll be back when the stew is complete. So here is the completed stew. It turned out really well. The cornstarch really thickened it up and the meat just falls apart. So those peas and carrots add a nice flavor as well. So this cup of stew right here, I will insert a picture at the end with the smart points, but it's really, really good. For tonight's dinner, I am making chicken enchilada pasta. I'm super excited about this. We are huge fans of Mexican food in this family. It is comfort food at its finest. It is delicious and extremely flavorful, which is how we prefer our food. So let me show you what is in our chicken enchilada bake. You're going to need one pound of pasta. What I like to do is when I'm making something like this, I typically will use up extra pasta that I have in my pantry. So I'm gonna mix some of these egg noodles with these mini bow ties to equal the one pound of noodles. This eliminates waste and you don't even notice in this type of a dish. You're also going to need shredded chicken. I did meal prep this so it was ready to go. You can use rotisserie if that's easier for you, or you can make it in advance of your recipe, kind of like I did in a meal prep. I'm going to use a mixture of both fat-free cheddar and fat-free mozzarella cheese, green onion, chili powder, water, can of corn, fire roasted diced tomatoes, black beans, and red enchilada sauce. So let's get started on our dinner. The first thing that you want to do is go ahead and rinse and drain all of your pasta. That removes the starch from it, which keeps it from clumping together. This is pretty much a one pot meal, so we don't want all of our pasta clumping together. Once you've drained and rinsed your pasta, you're going to go ahead and add it to quite a large stock pot because again, this is a one pot meal. To this, we are gonna go ahead and add two cups of water. We are going to boil our pasta with some of our other ingredients, which makes this recipe awesome. We are also going to add in our enchilada sauce. The recipe calls for 10 ounces. This is a 19 ounce can. I'm going to add the entire thing only because I feel like these dishes are often on the dry side. So I like to go ahead and add the additional little bit of enchilada sauce. So it's about double the amount of enchilada sauce that the recipe calls for. And we are also going to add our Hunt's Fire Roasted Diced Tomatoes to our pot. And then lastly, we are just going to add in our chili powder. We're gonna let this come to a boil and then we are going to continue adding our ingredients. That way this pasta will have the opportunity to cook through in the tomato sauce the enchilada sauce, all that good stuff. Oh, and I almost forgot. We're gonna add in our green onions. I almost forgot to add those. Now we're ready to let this come to a boil and start the cooking process. Once your pasta is cooked almost all the way through, ooh, we're nice and steamy, just a little bit al dente, we are going to add in our drained and rinsed black beans and corn. Make sure you drain and rinse both of those items. And then we are also going to go ahead and add in our shredded chicken. And we're going to let this cook down for just a few minutes longer. We want to make sure those flavors get melted and the pasta finishes cooking through. Look at how amazing this is looking. I'm going to let it cook for just a few more minutes before we add in our cheese and then we'll get it plated up and I'll show you the completed dinner. After tasting the pasta, I did decide to go ahead and add in a packet of taco seasoning. And I did that just because there wasn't a whole lot of flavor. Um, yeah, there wasn't a lot of flavor. So I decided to go ahead and add in that taco seasoning. That'll give it that like authentic Mexican flavor. And I'm just going to put in just a tad more water as well, just to get that nice and mixed into the pasta. 
once your taco seasoning, if you choose to add it in, is all mixed in, your noodles are completely soft. We are going to be adding in eight ounces of cheese. This is all fat-free cheese. So it's going to be adding zero points per serving. This pot makes eight servings. So that is just one ounce of mozzarella or fat-free cheese, I should say, per serving which is zero points. So you're just gonna get that all mixed in and then our meal is ready to go. So here is the completed dinner. So this is one eighth of the pasta and I have added just a little bit of non-fat Greek yogurt for zero smart points and sprinkled a little bit of the leftover green onions on top. This is a full-size dinner plate. So this is a lot of food for only seven smart points. It looks absolutely delicious. It is cheesy it is mexican flavored it is definitely a comfort food for tonight's dinner i'm going to be making patty melts this is one of my all-time favorite foods but they are incredibly high in points. Not only do you have a lot of butter you have hamburger you have cheese you have a sourdough bread Yes, it is a lot of points. So I took a recipe, put a WW spin on it, and made it WW friendly. So let me show you what is in our patty melts. You're going to need some salt and pepper. To make the sauce, it's a secret sauce. You're gonna be using Dijon mustard, Worcestershire sauce, mayo, and barbecue sauce. The recipe also calls for hot sauce. I am omitting that just because we don't like anything really spicy. We're gonna substitute regular butter for I can't believe it's not butter spray. You're going to need some 96.4 lean ground beef, an onion, some sort of cheese. I'm gonna go ahead and use Jarlsberg Light. And then I'm gonna do Sara Lee bread as my bread of my patty melt. And then we're just gonna pair our sandwiches with some Brussels sprouts. So let's get started. So the first thing that we need to do is go ahead and get your ground beef into a bowl. Grab a piece of parchment paper or something for you to put your hamburger patties on. We're gonna go ahead and add in our Worcestershire sauce. It does call for about two teaspoons, so I am just going to wing that to get about two teaspoons of the Worcestershire. And then we are also going to season it with, oops, turn that guy around for you, there we go, with some salt and pepper. So go ahead and add that to your hamburger. And some pepper. And then we're gonna dig in with our hands and we're gonna make these into hamburger patties. So ground beef is 16 ounces raw, but once it cooks down, it's anywhere from like 10 to 12 ounces. So I'm going to make my hamburger here into four patties. So that would make them raw about four ounces each or cooked about three ounces each. So I'll be counting my points according to that. So just make sure that you get everything nice and mixed in. You wanna make sure your Worcestershire sauce and your salt and pepper are mixed throughout. And then what I will do is typically just break it in half and then break that in half. And just try to get as close as you can to equal size of patty. So we're just going to flatten these out. I want mine fairly thin because it is going to cook down and I want it to cover my entire slice of bread. That is one of the best things about a patty melt is every bite has a hamburger in it. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that here on my sheet and I'm just going to repeat that until all four of my hamburger patties are formed and then we're gonna get started with the cooking. So yummy. So the first thing we're gonna do is add some nonstick cooking spray to a rather large skillet because you want the skillet to be big enough to cook all of your patties. And then I did slice up one sweet onion. So we're gonna go ahead and add our onion slices to our pan. We're gonna get these cooked down until they are nice and caramelized. We'll set those aside and then we'll throw our burgers into the same pan. For the secret sauce, we are just going to simply add one tablespoon of G.H. Hughes or any other type of barbecue sauce, quarter cup of mayo, and a quarter cup of Dijon mustard. We're just gonna give this a nice stir until fully combined, and that is the sauce for our patty melts. And here is the completed sauce. It looks super good, it smells amazing. And remember, I did omit the hot sauce, so you can always add that as well if you make the sauce. Once you have your onions nice and browned, you're just gonna go ahead and set 
those aside. You're gonna keep your pan nice and warm. We're gonna add in our hamburger patty. Again, cooking them or making them a little bit thinner will definitely help with the cooking process. You can go ahead and season these with some additional salt and pepper if you would like. We're gonna allow these to thoroughly cook through before we top them with our cheese. And then we'll be ready to add our bread to the pan to get nice and crispy as well. So what's great about this is it's a one pan meal. Once your hamburger patties are cooked through, we're gonna go ahead and add on our slice of Jarlsberg cheese. I love this cheese. It is only one smart point a slice. That is amazing. So we're gonna go ahead and add that on to all of our hamburger patties. And I'm going to remove them from the heat when the cheese starts to melt. We'll clean out our pan and we'll get our bread nice and toasted. Once you've removed your hamburgers, just go ahead and set those aside and we're gonna get ready to get our bread going. So you're gonna drop your bread in your pan. You're gonna go ahead and add butter or whatever it is that you're gonna put on it. So I'm just gonna use some, I can't believe it's not butter spray. And we're just gonna add both our slices to our pan until they become nice and toasty and crispy. And then we'll add our hamburger and our onions and I will show you what the patty melt looks like and then we will top it with our secret sauce. So super easy to make a patty melt that's WW friendly. Once your bread begins to crisp up, you're gonna go ahead and add your hamburger patty back to your bread. And we're also gonna go ahead and add some of our nice, delicious grilled onions to the top of our patty melt. And just continue to let your bread cook down and then we will be ready to eat our dinner. Once your bread gets nice and toasted, you're gonna go ahead and remove the top. Look at how friggin' delicious that looks. And then you're gonna go ahead and top it with a little bit of your secret sauce. I am not going to put very much on mine because I don't wanna have to count the smart points. We'll spread that out and get the sandwich back together. I'll show you what my completed dinner looks like with my veggies. So here's my completed dinner. Look at this patty melt. Oh my gosh look at that hamburger those onions that cheese and then i just paired it with my brussels sprouts that i just cooked in the microwave with a little spray butter salt and pepper so this entire dinner this patty melt you guys five smart points so that makes my dinner a total of five smart points o m g For tonight's dinner, we're going to be having chicken pad thai. This is one dish that is typically incredibly high in smart points. I was able to take a full fat recipe, modify it down to make a WW friendly chicken pad thai. So let me show you what is in tonight's dinner. You're going to need some minced garlic, some brown sugar substitute, rice vinegar, soy sauce, eggs, minced onion or green onion, whatever you prefer, matchstick carrots. I'm going to be adding sugar snap peas because I do not have any bean sprouts. Unfortunately, my store does not sell fresh ones. So I'm gonna sub out for the sugar snap peas. You're going to need some Thai noodles, some chicken breast that you are going to trim. If you have any excess fat, make sure you trim that off of your chicken breasts. A lime, some unsalted peanuts, and a red bell pepper. So let's get started on chicken pad thai. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to get one half of a cup of peanuts and we need to roughly chop these. We also need to slice our red pepper, chop the ends off of our snap peas and dice up our chicken. So trim the fat and dice that up. Once we have everything chopped up and ready to go, we'll get our noodles on the stove.
while our water is coming to a boil for our noodles, we're gonna go ahead and make some sauce. So I have one quarter cup of brown sugar substitute. What I'm using is Truvia. To the Truvia, we're going to be adding one quarter cup of soy sauce. We are also going to be adding two tablespoons of rice vinegar. And then we're gonna go ahead and add the juice of our lime, which is about a tablespoon. And then you're gonna give this a nice mix with our whisk. The recipe also calls to add fish sauce. I do not have any, and I didn't wanna buy fish sauce just for this one recipe, because honestly, I don't know that I would use it again. So we're gonna go ahead and whisk this together and set this aside. Next, we're gonna go ahead and co coat our pan with some nonstick cooking spray, add in our chicken, and we're gonna let this cook until it is almost all the way cooked through. And then we are going to put 10 ounces of our Pad Thai noodles into our boiling water and let those cook two to three minutes, drain them, and then set them aside. Once your Pad Thai noodles are cooked through, you're just gonna go ahead and drain them and set them aside. They'll be re-added to our dish a little bit later, but these only need to cook two to three minutes until they're cooked all the way through. Once your chicken is cooked almost all the way through, about 95%, you're gonna go ahead and remove it from the pan, transfer it to a plate so that we can start cooking down our vegetables. Once you remove the chicken, go ahead and spray your pan again with some of your nonstick cooking spray. And then to this, we are going to be adding all of our vegetables. So what we have here is our beans, or our uh, snap peas, I'm sorry, our matched carrots, garlic, minced onion, and last but not least, our red bell peppers. So we're gonna go ahead and add all of that to the pan, and we're gonna let this cook until these vegetables are most of the way cooked through. Once your vegetables are cooked almost all the way through, it's time to add some eggs. So we're just going to move our vegetables off to the side, and then we're going to crack our eggs right in the middle of our vegetables, let them start to cook, and then we're gonna mix all of the vegetables and the eggs together. Once you've cracked all your eggs, you're just gonna mix them, kind of scramble them throughout your vegetables until they're nice and cooked through. And then we'll be adding back in our chicken, our sauce that we made, and our noodles. Once your eggs have scrambled, we're gonna go ahead and add back in our cooked chicken, give that a good mix, and then we'll be adding in our noodles and our sauce. Once you add in your noodles, you're gonna go ahead and add in our sauce. We're gonna let this cook all the way through, and then I'll plate up our dinner. I'll show you the completed pad thai and give you the smart points. All right, so here is the completed dinner. So this is going to be one fifth of the pad thai. That gives you two ounces of noodles per serving. So the only thing you have to count points for are the noodles and also the peanuts that you put on top, which is about a tablespoon. So this is a lot of food for the smart points. It looks absolutely delicious. I cannot wait to have it. Thank you for watching another edition of Five Nights of Dinners that are WW friendly. I hope that you enjoyed seeing the five recipes that I shared with you. They are all linked down in the description box below, as well as all of my other discount codes that I can offer, my Facebook group and my Instagram. So make sure that you're clicking that little down arrow and check out the description box. If you're new to my channel, I'd like to extend a warm welcome. I hope that you enjoyed the five nights of dinner. I do have three other five nights of dinner videos on my channel. So make sure that you check those out as well. Also subscribe, hit the notification bell. So you're notified every single time I upload a new video. I would be forever grateful if you would give this video a thumbs up, comment down below. Let me know which of these five recipes you are dying to try. And of course, have a wonderful day and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.